Hey, everybody. Keith Burns with Green Cover here, and I'm with my friend Andy Lyon. Andy is with Farm Journal, the Trust in Food Project, and this is part of a series that we're doing on Climate Smart Commodity Grants, just getting you the information so you can make decisions about whether or not this might be a program that would work for you and your operation. So, Andy, thanks for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your time, and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the Farm Journal project that you guys have going on. So, thanks, Keith. Our Farm Journal team is uh, really excited to be here today to talk about our Connected Ag Climate Smart Commodities Project. So the first question uh, a lot of producers ask when we talk about our project is, what is Climate Smart Agriculture? Um, and really it's the same things that most of the folks that uh, are working with Green Cover Seed um, are used to talking about, soil health, regenerative agriculture, conservation agriculture, really all just different ways to talk about how um, you know, we can do a better job on the farm, uh, improving soil health, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, um, and utilizing those ecosystem services that uh, nature can provide. Yep. So it's practices that are good for the soil. And hey, if we can get paid for doing those, why not, right? That's absolutely right. So just a little bit about Trust in Food here at Farm Journal. Um, our Trust in Food team was created back in 2018. Uh, we are the sustainability arm of uh, Farm Journal. And, you know, we really believe in uh, that, that conservation pyramid approach, that uh, technical assistance, uh, financial incentives, and the, the cultural support are all really important and necessary when producers are trying to make uh, changes in practices towards uh, uh, regenerative agriculture principles. So um, we, we really believe in that and uh, really use that approach uh, in this project. So again, the name of our grant, the Connected Ag Climate Smart Commodities Project, um, is a grant from USDA through the full Climate Smart Commodities uh, Partnerships Program. Um, Farm Journal was awarded $40 million to work with 500 producers uh, across 19 states. And so we're really excited about the opportunity we have to work across a whole range of different agricultural systems, different commodities, um, because uh, again, there's a tremendous amount of diversity out there. Um, in agriculture, agriculture across the country, um, and it, you know, how we implement practices is different across the landscape. Yeah. And so here you can see a map of the 19 states um, that we're working in. Um, you'll see three different colors there on the map. We have the, broken those states into the three different pods. All practices that we have available are eligible across all 19 states. Uh, we do place a little more emphasis on livestock practices in that northern Great Plains pod, um, a little more focus on nutrient management in row crop systems uh, across the I states and, and through the Carolinas and Tennessee. Um, and then as we move down into the southeast pod, um, have a little more focus on uh, specialty crop production. Uh, but again, um, producers of, of any size and commodity um, are eligible across all 19 states. One of the other keys to our grant, besides just uh, practice implementation on the ground for producers is trying to utilize data um, to help understand the impact that we're having by implementing these conservation or sustainability practices, um, and then being able to hopefully be compensated for the good work that we're doing uh, on the ground. And so each producer that participates in our grant uh, will also be um, given a subscription to a data management platform for the next three years. And again, we believe these data management platforms will be uh, profitable for producers in a couple of ways. One is simply having better data to make those on-farm management decisions. Um, always having better data, more data um, is, is important and helps you make better decisions. Um, but this really the second reason is because you know, as we look at the the world of carbon markets, ecosystem service markets right now, um, you know, we don't think they function real well for agriculture. And what we believe is important in the future is to build a system where the environmental benefits that are gained from the sustainability or conservation practices that are implemented are connected as attributes to the commodity itself. They are not split apart into a carbon credit and uh, a commodity that you sell, but rather the benefit is attached to that commodity as that commodity goes through the supply chain. And in that way, um, you know, we can we can really look at supply chain, supply sheds, 
um, and and hopefully get producers a way that we they can be compensated for those environmental benefits that are being uh, generated uh, when they grow those crops. And so we believe these data management platforms are a key way that we create and store that data and then are able to transfer that data through the supply chain. We will be with all 500 producers in our grant on the ground providing technical assistance, both in the form of uh, helping to understand um, the nuances of uh, implementing the practice itself on the ground. Um, certainly we'll be engaging with local experts as well, um, knowing that we certainly can't be the, the uh, expert on all different cropping systems across 19 states. Um, so we will have local uh, expertise available as well. Um, we will also be providing coaching around that data management process that I talked about a minute ago. Um, so in that way, we will be providing uh, numerous forms of support to the producer um, that, that uh, works through our grant. And then finally, just to touch on the practices that we offer financial assistance for. Um, on the, the left side of your screen, you'll see um, a number of practices that relate more to row crop agriculture. Um, on the right, uh, practices that are more livestock related. Um, you know, but we can mix and match across um, all of these different practices. Uh, you know, we're really looking at um, trying to take a holistic approach, trying to build a conservation system uh, that best serves the producer over time. And so, um, you know, we also can mix and match. Um, if you if a producer is already implementing some of these practices, um, you know, we can we can still help on some of those existing practices. Um, but we can also look to build new practices in there as well. And in that way, kind of mix and match uh, between existing and new practices, see a little bit of additionality um, for that producer and really help the producer um, take some steps forward. I think one of the things that we really um, hope producers will see in our grant are some of the uh, innovative practices that are available to us that perhaps are not available in other programs at the moment. Uh, just a few examples would be um, with uh, some of our nutrient management related practices, um, being able to stack some of those practices together, raise the per acre payment uh, to the point where a producer could uh, improve or increase some of the technology that they're using on their own operations. Um, maybe the way that they're putting nutrients on with a planter, for instance. Um, we know that's a great practice. We know that it's very cost um, prohibitive. We're trying to help overcome that with our grant. And then as we look over at the livestock side, really thinking about um, you know, technology, uh, we're really interested in looking at uh, some of the virtual fencing options that are out there. I think that that has some real applicability. Um, we're also looking at livestock genetic improvement, trying to understand how um, improving the genetic um, profile across beef herds um, will help efficiency and how by increasing efficiency, um, we can reduce the amount of uh, greenhouse gases that are, that are released. So um, some, in my opinion, pretty innovative practices um, that we hope producers will have some interest in. Yeah, and, and so just a couple of questions. I'll, I'll, I'll put my farmer hat on and maybe ask some questions that, you know, uh, our producers who are watching this may want to know. So you kind of answered this a little bit, but you can, you can stack multiple things from within this list into what the individual does. And I'm assuming then that the payment amount is kind of dependent upon which practices that you're doing and implementing. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, almost every practice we have has either a per acre or per head uh, payment rate. Um, if you know, we can, when you get in, in touch with us, we can talk about those payment rates. Um, but yes, we absolutely want to stack these uh, practices together and create that systems approach. Um, and yes, the payment does go up uh, for each one of those practices that you implement. And, and is there a is there a maximum payout for per participant on this? I'm assuming there probably is. Can you share just a little bit about what that looks like? Yeah, yeah. For each producer in our grant, um, we do have uh, a rough cap of around forty thousand dollars. Um, now, now some producers that uh, you know are very large scale will implement some practices and and maybe max out at that forty thousand in in one year. Other producers will be able to work with for multiple years, um, and that's really you know part of that technical assistance that we provide, um, really planning that system out. 
And we understand that through our grant, you know, no producer is going to meet all of their long-term conservation and sustainability goals. What we really hope to do through our project is help producers take another step down that path um, and hopefully an innovative step. And by doing so, um, you know, make those next steps to come uh, even easier. And again, we work very closely with the USDA, um, the NRCS, the FSA offices, um, so that, you know, we're doing this in partnership with them. Um, and so that, you know, when you uh, are already working on some equip projects, maybe on some CSP projects, um, you know, we can we can stack this program on top or use it in conjunction with what you're already doing um, and not to be seen as maybe a, a completely different or set aside program. Yeah. And and the so so the 40,000 cap, that's for the program, not per year, I'm assuming. And and if I sign up for this, am I, am I signing up for a three year commitment, a five year commitment? What's what's the commitment level here? Yeah. So the good news is, is that we just have annual contracts. OK, um, we sign up each year at a time. Um, when you sign up with us, some of the nice things are is that you own all of your own data that's generated, we will ask you to share some of that data with us for our reporting back to USDA, um, but you own all your own data. Um, you also retain the rights to any uh, ecosystem service market, any carbon market um, that you can take advantage of. Now, the project is working um, with a number of, of um, you know, CPG, consumer product goods companies, um, you know, ag companies, food and beverage companies um, to make more opportunities available. Um, to sell those those carbon credits, those greenhouse gas emission credits. Um, but again, you retain the rights to decide which way you want to market um, those benefits. So, in other words, if I'm in this program, when the program ends, or if my one, two, three, your commitment ends, I can still use this as a launching point. You can help connect us to people that can bring value down the road on, on some of these practices as well. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And it's really a key uh, tenant of our grant, trying to make more opportunities available uh, for producers to take advantage of these value added markets. Yeah. Well, this all sounds great, Andy. What do people do if they want to get more information? Because obviously there's a ton of questions that people will have about these different practices. How do they get connected with you folks to get more information? Yeah, absolutely. So the best way is to go to our website and that's www.trustinfood.com slash grow. Um, from the website, you can see more in-depth information about the things that we've talked about here today. You can fill out the, uh, the questionnaire uh, to get um, signed up for our grant. At that point, um, we would directly reach out to you and start that conservation planning process. Um, you're also um, you know, free to reach out to me directly as well. And my uh, email there, alion at farmjournal.com. So, you know, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, we'd love to, to talk with you and uh, talk about your farm and what your conservation goals are um, and talk about if this opportunity might be right for you. Yeah. And so, folks, I would encourage you to do that. Check out their website, email Andy directly if you have questions. There is a lot of assistance, a lot of money, a lot of encouragement out there for people who want to either implement some of these practices or expand on what they're already doing. So. Uh, please reach out if you have any interest, and we'll be doing more of these with other opportunities. So, Andy, thanks again for your time. We sure appreciate it. Thanks, Keith. Appreciate you.